Hallelujah. You're welcome for this wonderful Sunday service today with Pastor John Justin Yetu. This is a special service and I want you to invite your friends, your brothers, your sisters and everybody because this is a Thanksgiving service and uh, the theme today is celebrating the help of God. Hallelujah. Welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. This is a special service. This is a very wonderful special service that I want you to be part of this service today from the beginning to the end. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Bridging, all the way from South Africa. God bless you. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Mm. Born again. Thank you, Jesus. Rise up, Lord. Mm. Rise up on again. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. We thank you. you. We glorify your name. We thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful time. In this very moment that we are in your presence, Lord, what a great day, what a great time you have brought us up to this far. We will magnify your name and will praise you because you are mighty and you are majestic in all ways. Father, we bless you. We thank you. We honor you. All oh, glory to God. This day is a beautiful day. And this day is a wonderful time for the children of God. I must say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. I just came from an hour of prayer, about three hours of prayers. Hallelujah. So I want to join you again. Those of you who are right now with me, let us celebrate the Lord. And uh, I'm saying dry bones are rising up again. Dry bones are rising up again. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Every tribe on is rising up again. Tell Jesus, let in the memories. I 
I hear the sound There is a shaking Mighty power Sovereign God is moving Every dry bones Is rising up again Hallelujah Every dry bones Is rising up again I hear the sound There is a shaking Oh There is a shifting Lord Oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord, my God and my King. Oh, yes, I hear the sound, there is a shifting. I hear the sound, there is a shaking. Oh, the mighty power of the sovereign God is moving in our midst in the name of Jesus. Praise God and praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless the Lord for this Sunday service. And right now, I want us to start with our message. I want to believe God that He's going to bless you. And He's going to bless me and you. Hallelujah. This day, this Sunday, we are celebrating the help of God. Hallelujah. We are celebrating the goodness of God in our lives. And as the Bible says in, a hand, in Psalms 124, Oh, listen to the word of God. Oh, yes, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose against us, then they had swallowed us up when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters and gone of our soul. Blessed be the God who has not given us up. Oh, to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. And the snare is broken and we escaped. Hallelujah. Our help is in the name of the Lord who has made, who made heaven and earth. Praise the Lord. Today we are celebrating the help of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory to Jesus. 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 This is a moment we've got to come and praise God and declare that He is mighty and He is worthy to be glorified. We are saying that the dry bones are rising up again. We are saying there is a shift in the Holy Spirit, in the atmosphere, praise God. And this day I want to appreciate God so much for bringing you to listen to this message because today we are going to have a great moment celebrating the help of God. Had it not been the Lord, the Bible says, the waters would have swallowed us. Hallelujah. The waters would have swallowed us. The waters would have swallowed us. Think about from the beginning of the pandemic. Think about from the time there was a lockdown. Think about the kind of fear that you had. But today we are saying, Oh, blessed be the Lord who has not given us up as a prey to the teeth of COVID-19, to the teeth of the struggle, the financial struggle. We declare today that our God is good and great. I am saying, oh, the bones are rising up again. From the month of July up to the end of the year, I want to declare in the name of Jesus, you are not going to struggle anymore because God, who has seen you all through this time, will not give up on you in the name of Jesus. He will not give up on you. He will not give up on you. No, 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 no. God will not give up on you. But it will keep you safe and sound in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I was preaching tonight at midnight in the midnight watch. Of course, in the USA, it is about midnight. Here, it's about 7 a.m. And it was a great moment. And was saying, God, who has been able, who has been faithful to us, he will never give up on us. He will never surrender us to the prayer because he is mighty in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are celebrating the help of God. 
This Sunday is very special, but we have dedicated it just to thank God and tell God, thank you for the far you have brought us. Thank you, Jesus, for this time you have brought us, Lord. Had it not been you, had it not been your presence, had it not been your mercies, oh God, we would be swallowed, we would be dead in the name of Jesus. But we thank God that today it is a mighty day, it's a mighty great time that we've got to celebrate with God. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in the book of First Chronicles, chapter 15, verse 26. Hallelujah. The book of First Chronicles, chapter 15, verse 26. And it came to pass when God helped the levites that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, that they offered seven bullocks and seven rams. The Bible says that when God helped the Levites to carry the Ark of the Covenant, they come and celebrated and said, our God is a great God. Excuse me. They said, God is a mighty God. This God has seen us through. Because carrying the Ark of the Covenant, if you were sinful, you would die instantly. But the Bible says, the Bible says here, that the Levites, after God helped them to bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, they offered sacrifices. They offered bullocks and rams, seven rams, to just say, Lord, thank you. This Sunday is so special because we are going to give to the Lord, telling God, thank you for the fire you have brought us. Thank you for the blessings. Psalms 116 verse 17 says, I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of God, that I will give to my Father in heaven. I will give him my offerings, and after I've given him my offerings, I will call on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That means in this season, you've got to thank God. You've got to give God a sacrifice and tell him, Lord, I will call on you. That from this jan from July up to the end of the year, I will call on you. That you bless my life and bless my family. If God has not been of help to you mid this year, 2020. If God has been of help to you in this year, even up to this mid year, you will have to offer him an offering as a family. You've got to offer him an offering as an organization, as a ministry, as a church. To just say, Lord, thank you for the far you brought us. Hallelujah. That's what Samuel said in First Samuel chapter 7, verse 12. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shane and called the name of it Ebenezer. Hallelujah. Saying, This far the Lord has helped us. Hallelujah. This far the Lord has brought us. And then, of course, Psalms 100. A hundred verse four says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving, unto his courts with praise. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, Be thankful and bless his name. Glory to Jesus. This Sunday we shall come thank giving God all the praise. We shall come into his courts with praise. We shall declare the goodness of God because he has blessed us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Of course, Psalms 95, verse 2 says, Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto his psalms, unto him with psalms. Praise the Lord. So this Sunday, we have dedicated it to thank God, just to tell him, Father, you've been so good to us. You've been so wonderful to us. And after that, I will prophesy and declare blessings over your life. Because one thing I know, he is a great God. He is a mighty King. He never forsakes. He never gives up on us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So this Sunday, we want to say one thing. That thanksgiving is the guarantee of access into the presence of God. If you want to get to the presence of God, you've got to note the following things. Number one, thanksgiving is the guarantee of access into God's presence. 
If you want to enter the presence of God, enter with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Our time in God's presence is only useful, is only helpful, and also valuable if we went there with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. You can come in the presence of God without thanksgiving and you'll go back dry. But if you want to access the presence of God, you've got to go with praise. You've got to go with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. And the profitability, number two, the, profit, the profitability and productivity of our time in, God, in God's presence is assured by thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Our profitability and productivity of our time with God, of God's presence, is assured by thanksgiving. Hallelujah. If you want our time to be valuable and you want it to be profitable, it's only assured when we give thanks to God. Time in God's presence is a waste without the climate of appreciation. I must repeat that again. That time in God's presence is a waste of time without appreciation. But if you want your time with God to be of great value, enter his courts with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Number three, thanksgiving is a spiritual exercise that is loaded with both values and virtues. And today we want to talk about the virtues, sorry, and the virtues and the values of thanksgiving. The virtues and the values of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. The virtues and the value of thanksgiving. Number one, I want to tell you something. That thanksgiving prepares the ground for answered prayer. Hallelujah. Especially in the time of trouble. Thanksgiving prepares you, prepares the ground for answered prayers. Especially in a time of trouble. If you know how to be thankful, you are not permitted to be helpless in time of need, in time of trouble. If you know how to be thankful, you are not allowed to be helpless in your time of trouble. Because thanksgiving is your shield against emergencies, against agencies. Thanksgiving is your shield against emergencies, against agencies. It has become your bomb shelter and strong tower when you praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 and 23, that it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. The Bible says they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah. And the Bible says in Psalms 50 verse 14 verse 15, Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay your vows unto the Most High God. And pay your vows. And when you pay your vows, the Bible says in verse 15, and call upon me in the time, in the day of trouble, I will deliver you and I will glorify you. Hallelujah. If you know to be thankful, if you know how to be thankful, then you are not permitted to be helpless in the time of trouble. Hallelujah. Pay your tithe. The Bible says pay your vows unto the Lord. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Call upon me in the day of trouble. It is only those who are thankful that are not permitted to be helpless in time of trouble. Hallelujah. So thanksgiving in time of peace prepares you or prepares the ground for answers in your time of trouble. Don't wait for time when things are tough. Then you say, I'm running to give unto God. In your time of peace, in your time of calm, give unto Jesus. Give unto God the thanksgiving offering and declare to him, Lord, thank you for the fire you have brought me. The Bible says at the end of it all, your offering prepares you or prepares 
the ground for answered prayers in your time of need. Thanksgiving in time of peace prepares the ground for answers in time of trouble. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, I must tell you one thing. Only the call of the thankful secures response from God in times of trouble. I must repeat this and say again. Only the call of the thankful secures response from God in time of trouble. When you're crying to God, when you have, you know, when you are, you're having a challenge around you, when you are confronted with a challenge, only those who are being thankful are the ones who secure, oh God, a response from God in time of trouble. But those who do not do that, those who cannot do that, those instead who say, ah, the things are for other people, let me tell you something. Only the call of, this, of, the, of the thankful secures response from God. If you've been thankful every time, but in your time of need, when you call to God, He answers you. When you call to God, He hears you. But those who are ungrateful never hear from God, never hear anything. The, God ignores them. The realm of the unanswered prayers and the lack of divine intervention is the realm of the ungrateful. Hallelujah. The realm of the unanswered prayers and the lack of divine intervention is the realm of the ungrateful. Until God is appreciated for what he did for you in the past, he is not interested in what you want him to do for you in the present and in the future. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I must tell you something that until God is appreciated for what he did for you in the past, he is not interested in what you want him to do for you in the present. Hallelujah. So that's why this Sunday we have taken it just to thank God, to give unto God an offering, to say, Lord, thank you for the fire you have brought us. Because as I have said, until God is appreciated for what he did for you in the past, until you appreciate him for preserving you, until you appreciate him for providing, until you, uh, you appreciate him for sustain, sustaining you, He's not interested in what you want to do for him in your present. If you cannot appreciate him and say, Lord, thank you for the far you have brought me in Jesus' name. Without joy, you are excused from God. And without God, you are on your own. So you have to come with joy. You've come to come celebrating and saying, Lord, thank you for the far you have brought me. But let me tell you, without joy, you are excused from God. And without God, you are on your own. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. This is a great time. This is a great moment. I must tell you that if the devil ever did anything in your life that is making you angry, it is a shadow compared to what he planned to do to you had it not been the Lord. Hallelujah. So whatever you say, the enemy has tormented you. It is just a shadow. Compared to what he wanted to do for you, had it not been God's intervention in your life. Hallelujah. If you can thank God for where you came from, if you can thank God for where you are, no devil can stop you from reaching where God wants you to reach. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 If you can begin to thank God today for where you came from, if you can thank God for where you are today, no devil can stop you from reaching where God wants you to reach. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So that's why you've got to thank God today. You've got to appreciate him today. That's why you've got to say, Lord, thank you for this fire you have brought me. Number two, thanksgiving magnifies the Lord. Thanksgiving magnifies the Lord. The Bible says in Psalms 69 verse 30, I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. 
Thanksgiving magnifies the Lord. When you begin to thank God, you make God big, bigger than your problem. You make him bigger than your situation. You make him bigger than every condition around you. The Bible says, I'll praise the name of God with a song. Hallelujah. Oh, dry bones are rising. Hey, there is a shift in the spirit. You begin to declare the praises of God. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 34 and 37, But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it rose against me, I caught it. By his beard, hallelujah, and he struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. Oh God, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will Deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Hallelujah. Sing unto God. Talk about God's goodness. Oh, when I was a young man, David said, A lion came, wanted to eat my father's sheep. I caught it by the hands. A lion is the most fiercest. Lion is the most terrifying you know, animal. But the Bible says, David held it and defeated it. Praise Jesus. And then the Bible says, and then a bear, the bear is one of the strongest animals. Bible says with his hands, with his hands, David tore it off and he defeated the bear. When you begin to magnify what God has done in your life, it diminishes your trouble. Your problem becomes so small. Oh, glory to Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you. We thank you. We thank you because you're wonderful. Let me tell you something. Thanksgiving magnifies the Lord in the lives and situation of God's people. And when God is magnified, the devil is minimized. When God is magnified, the devil is minimized. Hallelujah. Every time you say the Lord is my, pro my portion, the Lord is my provision, the Lord is my supply, the Lord is my healing. The Lord will do a B, C, D. You are diminishing the devil. But when you begin to say, my sickness, my pain, that's the only time you give the devil victory. But let me tell you, thanksgiving magnifies the Lord in the lives and situations of God's people. And when God is magnified, the enemy is minimized. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what David did. He minimized and said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? When I was a young man, there was a lion, I killed it. There was a bear, I killed it. What about this uncircumcised Philistine? When God is magnified, when God is magnified, the challenge is rectified. Praise God. When God is magnified, oh, the challenge is rectified. When you begin to thank the Lord, things that look so big become flattened out. Things that look so big become too tiny. Hallelujah. Oh, we glorify Jesus for this day. We want to bless the Lord and thank Him for the far He has brought us. And we will say, God, yes, we are shifting. We are shifting. There is a shift in the Spirit. There is a shift in the anointing. There is a shift in your finances. There is a shift in everything as long as you thank God today in Jesus' name. Number two, thanksgiving magnifies the Lord in the lives and situations of God's people. And I say, it, and when God is magnified, His help and mercy in your life are magnified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanksgiving magnifies the Lord in the presence, in the lives and situation of God's people. And when God is magnified, His help and mercy are multiplied. Remember in John chapter 6 verse 11, And Jesus took the loaves, and when He had given thanks, 
he distributed to the disciples. And the disciples, yes, to them that were sat down, the likewise of the fishes as much as they, they would. He distributed the, the loaves and the fish to the people. When Jesus gave thanks, there was multiplication. There was mercy. Oh God. <clears throat> Everything multiplies around those who are grateful. Check on the people who have been giving. Check on the people who have been appreciating God. Even in this time, you see that they are multiplying in their project. I have never seen somebody who has given his tithe, who has given a special offering, who has given something to God, who is languishing, who is saying things are tough. No, I have not seen one. I'm yet to see. But let me tell you, everything multiplies around those who are grateful in the name of Jesus. Because appreciation is a doorway to supernatural provisions. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Pamela, for sharing this, vis this video in the name of Jesus. Make it a play party and the Lord will bless you. Appreciation is a door to supernatural provisions. If you want to be connected to the supplies that can't be explained, be grateful to God. Hallelujah. Oh, everything multiplies around those who are grateful. Every time God does for your miracle, thank God and say, Lord, thank you for the fire you have brought me. Thank you for this promotion. Thank you for this job. Thank you for sustaining me. Oh, appreciation, as I said, is a door to supernatural supplies. Hallelujah. So if you want to be connected to supplies, to financial breakthrough, to divine health, to divine provision, hey, if you want to be connected to that, to those supplies that cannot be explained, be grateful to God. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Ingratitude magnifies the devil. <clears throat> For you to be being ungrateful, ingratitude magnifies the devil and minimizes the Almighty. And when the enemy is magnified, the activity of the enemy is magnified in your life. Oh God, have mercy. Have mercy where we have not been so grateful. Have mercy, King of glory. Ingratitude magnifies the enemy. And it minimizes the almighty God. And when the enemy is magnified, his activity in your life is magnified. Because you say, this pain, oh, this cough, oh, this sickness. Every time you confess like that, you're multiplying the activity of the devil in your life. Because you are in gratitude. You are ungrateful. Because the Bible says in John chapter 10 verse 10, The enemy comes but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus says, I am come that they may have life, and they might have it more abundantly. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you've got to learn to be grateful. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10 says, Nor complain, as some of them also complain, and were destroyed by the destroyer. So when you become a serial complainer, when you become a serial ungrateful person, I can assure you, <clears throat> you'll never have more great blessings from the Lord. Hallelujah. As you are right now, <clears throat> as you are right now, there is something to thank God for. Hallelujah. There is something to thank God for. As you are right now, there is something to thank God for. So you've got to identify something for which you are grateful to God. And you will move God to step in. And when he steps in, the enemy must step out in the name of Jesus. When you identify something that the Lord has done for you, literally, you're actually chasing the devil away from your life. 
If you can be thankful, no devil can stop your destiny. If you can be thankful, if you can say, Oh, Ebenezer, <clears throat> oh God, no devil can stop your destiny. No devil can stop your vision. No devil can stop your purpose. It doesn't matter where you came from. If you can only be thankful, no devil can stop your destiny. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Number three, thanksgiving is a good thing that connects people to the good things of God. <clears throat> thanksgiving is a good thing that connects people to the good things of God. In Psalms 90 verse 1 and 2 the Bible says, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. To show forth thy loving kindness. Thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Hallelujah. It is a good thing to give thanks. It is a good thing. When did you have time just to thank God? That's why this Sunday we are giving it and offering it to God to say, My Father, thank you for the fire you have brought us. Oh, the waters would have swallowed us. Lord, the fear that had gripped the world, oh, would have finished us. But we thank you that you have brought us to this time. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 26 verse 11 says, So you shall rejoice in every good thing which the Lord your God has given to you and your house. And you and the Levite and the stranger is among you. You will rejoice in every good thing. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to rejoice in every good thing. He has helped you. He has sustained you. He has preserved you. He has kept you alive. He has provided for you. You have not died during this pandemic. <clears throat> but you've got to thank God. The Bible says, <clears throat> the thing that God has given to you and your house and the priest and the stranger who is among you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Psalm 34 verse 10 says, The young lion lacks and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack anything good. <clears throat> Hallelujah. That the young lion may suffer hunger. Oh God. <clears throat> but those who trust in God, the thankful shall never lack anything good. Because the Bible says in Joshua chapter 21 verse 45, Not a word, a word fail of any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel. All came to pass. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, I must tell you something. Those who give thanks are connected to the receiving of the good promises of God. Hallelujah. Those who give thanks are connected both to the goodness and the good things of God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. The giving of thanks is key to the receiving of the good promises of God. The giving of thanks is the key to the receiving of of the good promises of God in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you can't see the last good thing God did in your life, you won't be able to see the next good thing God will do in your life. <clears throat> Hallelujah. If you can't see the last thing God did for you, the good thing God did for you, you can never see the next good thing God intends to do for you. But if you can remember the good thing God, God did for you in the past, I can assure you, your future is assured. Your future is assured. <clears throat> the virtues and values of thanksgiving. Number four, thanksgiving connects people to the depth of God's wonders. Hallelujah. Ah, yes. 
When you give thanks to God, it connects you to the depth of God's wonders. The Bible says in Psalms 107, verse 22 and 24, And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving, and declare his works with rejoicing. They that go down to the sea in ships, that do business in great waters, these see the works of the Lord, and his wonders in the deep. Oh, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Thanksgiving connects you to the depth of God's wonders. Hallelujah. Praise God. These seek, these see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. Those only who give thanks to God are connected to the depth of God's wonders. Hallelujah. Look between the givers and the non-givers. Look at the difference between those who give thanks to God and those who do not give thanks to God. Those who are not appreciative are languishing. They are struggling. When you call them, you tell them, how are you doing? They say, Pastor, things are tough. Life is tough. And yet for you who give thanks, you say, oh, thank you. We will never lack anything good. We will never lack anything good because our God is a mighty God, is a mighty King, is a mighty Lord. Oh, Jehovah. Psalm 30, verse 10, 12, the 12 says, Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me, Lord. <clears throat> Be my helper. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth, hey, and clothed me with gladness. To the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. Oh Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Why? Because you have been good to me. Those who give thanks to God are connected to the deep wonders of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18 that in everything give thanks. For this is the will of Christ, of God in Christ Jesus, for you. Hallelujah. And I love Psalm 71, verse 7. The Bible says, I am as a wonder unto many, but thou art my strong refuge. That is King James Version. <clears throat> King, New King James Version says, I have become as a wonder to many. But you are my strong refuge. Oh my God, I have become a wonder. Ladies and gentlemen, I have become a wonder. Whether you like it or not, I have become a wonder. I have become a wonder to many. I have become a blessing to many. Why? Because God is my strong refuge. If God is for me, who can be against me? Hey, if God is my shepherd, I shall never want. He leads me oh, to green pastures. Hallelujah. Oh, I have become as a wonder. When you give thanks to God, you become a wonder. Hallelujah. I feel like preaching tonight, this morning, this afternoon, in Jesus' name. Oh my God. Thanksgiving connects people to the depth of God's wonders. You become God's wonder. Hallelujah. I'm a wonder. Tell your neighbor, I'm a wonder. Type there and say, I'm a wonder. I'm a wonder. I'm a wonder unto many. That when people see you, they see a different person. They see blessings. They see prosperity. They see joy. They see peace. Because you have learned always to give thanks to God in every situation. I am a wonder. Hallelujah. You are a wonder in Jesus' name. I am proud because I'm a wonder. Hallelujah. I am not a beggar. I'm a lender. I am not beneath. I am above. I am not a tail. I am the head. Why? Because I praise my God. He has made me wonder. Thanksgiving is an asset of non-negotiable worth. Oh, thanksgiving is an asset of non-negotiable worth. When God is appreciated, his power is activated, and his works and wonders 
are manifested in your life. Glory to Jesus. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Oh, the virtues and the values of thanksgiving. Celebrating the help of God. That when God is celebrated, when God is appreciated, His power is activated and His works and wonders are manifested. You see them and He is glorified <clears throat> in the name of Jesus. The ceaseless flow of thanks, the ceaseless flow of thanks will provoke the ceaseless flow of God's wonders in your life. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. The ceaseless flow of thanks or oh, unto God will provoke the ceaseless flow of God's wonders. Every time you give God thanks, every time you give God an offering, every time you appreciate God, every time you say, Lord, you are so good. Every time the ceaseless flow of thanks unto God will provoke the ceaseless flow of wonders in your life, of signs and wonders in your life, of open doors, of supernatural harvest. Hey, as long as you have ceaseless flow of thanks to God, He will provoke, you will provoke the ceaseless flow of wonders upon your life. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something, that the lifestyle of thanksgiving turns a person into a generation of wonder. Hallelujah. Oh my God. I pray that today you'll get a deeper revelation of this word, that the lifestyle of thanksgiving turns a person into a generation of wonder. Oh Jesus, I want to be a generation of wonder. <clears throat> I want to be a generational wonder king of God. I want to be a generational financial deliverer. I want to be a generational impactful person. The lifestyle of thanksgiving turns you <clears throat> into a generational wonder. Ah, ah, ah. That's what the Bible says in Psalm 71, verse 1. I am as a wonder. <clears throat> I have become a wonder so many, but you are my strong refuge, that even when God turns you into a wonder, he still remains your strong refuge. When God blesses you, do not say that I have arrived. Run to the house of God and give him thanks. The wonders, the miracles of God, the blessings of God do not take you away from the presence of God. If any of you, God has blessed you with financial breakthrough, God has promoted you, and that work has pulled you away from his presence, it ceases to be a blessing because a blessing makes you a wonder, makes you, it draws you closer. God becomes your refuge. Forget about these brothers and sisters. When they get money, they forget their church. They forget the work of God. They run away from the work of God. Forget about that. But I'm talking about something. That the lifestyle of giving turns a person into a generational wonder. A generational wonder. I'm a generational wonder. Who are you? <clears throat> Hallelujah. But let me tell you. That the ab absence of thanksgiving makes people to end as wanderers and destitutes on earth. Listen to me today and watch me carefully. The people who seem to be doing good at this time, they have never given thanks to God. But in the long run, let me tell you, the absence of thanksgiving makes people... To end as wanderers and destitutes on the earth. You become a wanderer. You become a destitute. You become a nothing. When you do not give thanks to God. Some people think it is by coincidence that's still alive. Some people say it was because of my energy <clears throat> and my education that today I have this job. It was because of my qualification. And so they grow wings. They look at Pastor John and say, Pastor John, 
We shall appreciate God later. We shall see you later. <clears throat> God becomes secondary to them. Their jobs <clears throat> take the number one position. I said the absence of thanksgiving to God <clears throat> makes people to end as wanderers, as destitutes on earth. So focusing on what you lack equals ingratitude. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I said one thing. <clears throat> that focusing on what, you, on what you lack. Excuse me. Focusing on what you lack equals ingratitude. And leads you to wandering on this earth. The people who are so focused on what they have. I wish I had this. I wish I had this. I wish I had this. And yet they have failed to appreciate God even for the oxygen that they are breathing. So today I challenge you. Focus. Determine to focus on what you have. Whatever little you have, appreciate God. <clears throat> Lord, thank you. Whatever little achievement, appreciate God. You all see a blessing. Everything that has happened around you that you thought was bad could have been badder and baddest if it was not for God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. We thank God. Number five, thanksgiving is the doorway to the destiny of glory. To be a thanksgiver is to maximize glory. You cannot give God thanks and get back shame. No. <clears throat> you cannot give God thanks and get back disappointment. You cannot give God thanks and get back mockery. You cannot give God thanks and give God and you receive failure. You cannot give God thanks and go empty handed. No. The Bible says in Jeremiah 30 verse 19, And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry and I will multiply them those who are thankful and they shall not be <coughs> excuse me sir excuse me and they shall not be few I will also glorify them oh glory to Jesus <coughs> and they shall not be small uh -uh. the people who give glory to God <coughs> never go small never grow small I'm not talking about in terms of body, but in terms of the presence of God, <clears throat> in terms of their prosperity, in terms of impact. The Bible says, they shall not be small. They that give thanks. Thanksgiving is the door to the destiny of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Oh my God, let me tell you my sister, my brother, and those who are watching, if you have not seen the glory of God upon your life, then your journey has just yet and has not just yet ended. Because your journey must end in glory. If you have not seen the glory of God, it means your journey has not yet ended. Because your journey must end in glory. Hallelujah. It has to end in glory. It has to end in, in joy. It has to end in praise. Hallelujah. My God. We thank you, Jesus, for this day. Oh, we bless you, my God. Thank you, Father. It doesn't matter what your history looks like. If you had been just fired by grace, then glorification is your destiny. Hallelujah. Between where you are and where God wants you to be, the vehicle you must use to travel that distance is called thanksgiving. Between where you are and where God wants you to be, the vehicle you have to use to travel the distance is called thanksgiving. Hallelujah. If you want to reach to your prosperity land, if you want to reach your promised land, 
if you want to reach a place of abundance, the only vehicle you have to use is thanksgiving. Thank him for the things he has done. Thank him for the things he did yesterday. Thank him for the things he is doing today. And thank him for the things he is yet to do in the name of Jesus. Every time the devil reminds you of where you are, remind him of where you are going. Hallelujah. Every time the devil reminds you of where you are, remind him of where you are going. Every time the devil reminds you of where you are, remind him of his destiny. Thanksgiving is the escape route from the world of smallness to the world of greatness. That's number five, the virtues and the values of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is, a, is the escape route from the world of smallness to the world of greatness. To be thankful is to be sizeful. Oh God, hallelujah. To be thankful is to be sizeful. Gratefulness is the door to greatness. Gratefulness is the door to greatness. Hallelujah. The absence of thanksgiving is the absence of glory. And the absence of glory is the abundance of shame. Oh my God. Oh Jesus. Pray tonight you begin to thank God for what you are and for where God has brought you. The absence of thanksgiving is the absence of glory. And the absence of glory is the abundance of shame, is the abundance of poverty, is the abundance of fear, is the abundance of failure. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 35, the wise shall inherit, inherit glory, but shame shall be the portion of fools. Those who do not learn, those who cannot praise God, those who cannot appreciate God. The wise shall inher inherit glory, but shame shall be the proportion, shall be the promotion of fools. So do not be counted among the fools, because for you, you know how to appreciate God and say thank you for the things that you have done. Number six, thanksgiving secures past and present blessings and also attracts future blessings. Thanksgiving secures the past and the present blessings and also attracts future blessings. Hallelujah. Malachi chapter 2 verse 1 and 4 says, And now all priests, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear and if you will not take it to heart, to give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts. I will set a curse upon him, and I will cast your blessings. Yeah, I have cast them already because you do not take it to heart. Behold, I will rebuke your descendants and spread refuse, spread refuse on your faces, the refuse of your solemn feasts, and one will take you away. Then you will know that I have sent this commandment to you, that my covenant with Levi may continue, says the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. The security of God's blessings is provided by thanksgiving from man. Glory to Jesus. The security of God's blessings is provided by thanksgiving from man. The blessing of God in your life can never be guaranteed if thanksgiving is absent, never. The blessing of God in your life can never be, can never be guaranteed if thanksgiving is absent. So learn to give thanks to God. Because the blessing of God without the release of thanksgiving attracts the curse of God. The blessing of God without the release of thanksgiving attracts the curse of God. Hallelujah. So learn to give thanks to Jesus and to appreciate Him for the good things that He has done and the things He's yet to do. The absence of thanksgiving will produce an outcome of shame and reproach in your life. And at the end of the day, you have nothing in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Thanksgiving attracts expected and needed blessings for the future. When you thank God for his finger, then you will see his hand. Hallelujah. And when you thank God for his hand, then you will see God <coughs> himself. Hallelujah. When you thank God for his finger, <coughs> you will see <coughs> his hand. And when you thank God for his hand, you will see God himself. And if you want God to change your levels, you change it. <coughs> Excuse me. With thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <coughs> if you want God <coughs> to change your level, you change your level with thanksgiving. <coughs> Whatever level, whether the level of finances, whether the level of spirituality, whether the level of anointing, you change that level by thanksgiving. Hallelujah. It is shifting. The dry bones are receiving flesh in the name of Jesus. If you want to change your level, if you want to change your standard, if you want to change your finances, change it with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. So what is our focus of thanksgiving? The acts of God, of the past. When we are giving God thanks, we are thanking God. For the acts of the past, the Bible says in Psalms 130, verse 1 and 5, Bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord of my soul and forget not all his blessings, his benefits. Number one, who forgives all our iniquities. Number two, who heals our diseases. Number four, who redeems my life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like of the eagles. Hallelujah. <clears throat> thank God for the past. Oh God, thank you for January. Thank you, Lord, for February. Thank you for March. Thank you for April. Thank you for May. Thank you for June. I will thank you for July. Lord, if the devil could not push me in those first six months, he will not push me down right from the month of July. In the name of Jesus, thank God. Thank him for the past, the battles fought, and the victories won on our behalf with our knowledge. Thank God there could be battles that God won without even your knowledge. The devil would have loved to do worse than what he did to you had it not been the Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 17 says, Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. You don't know how many battles, you don't know how many battles God fought for you without your knowledge. Begin to thank God for those, those battles. Thank you for the victories that we won in the past. Thank God for his provision in the past. Thank God for the supply in the past. Thank God for keeping you alive. Then number two, we give thanks to God for the acts of God in the privilege, in the present, the privilege of life, both the natural life and the spiritual life. There are some people who have already died physically. There are even those who have died spiritually in the lockdown. Some people have gone back to their worldly nature. Some people have backslidden. Some people no longer make, you know, the things of God as priorities in their lives. They are saying maybe when the lockdown is lifted, <clears throat> that's when their Christianity comes. But I want you to appreciate God for the acts of God in the present. Thank God that you can still open the Bible. Thank God that you can still pray that those who have given up. Psalms 150 verse 6 says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Begin to thank God 
The fact that you are alive shows that God's plan for your life is still intact. The mere fact that you're still alive, it is a sign that God's plan for you is still intact. It has not been altered. The fact that you are alive shows that your case is not yet closed. Hallelujah. Praise God. Appreciation is application for more. Appreciation is application for more. This day, appreciate God and will give you more. That's why you cannot be appreciative and be stagnated. People who are not, people who are appreciative to God have never been stagnated in life. And when we appreciate God, we appreciate also in life. Hallelujah. We do not depreciate, but we appreciate in life. We appreciate financially. We appreciate materially. We appreciate prayerfully. We appreciate spiritually. Hallelujah. Psalms 126 verse 3 says, The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. Hallelujah. So appreciate God for the past. Appreciate God for the present. And also appreciate God for the acts of God in the future. Hallelujah. John chapter 6 verse 11 says, And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the, to the disciples and disciples, to those sitting down, and likewise of the fish as much as they wanted. But Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, For have I know the plan that I have for you, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Begin to thank God for that. And say, Lord, thank you for my future that is still intact. Thank you for my future. I give you all the praise. So you have, you have given thanks to God for the acts of God in your past. 